Hello and welcome back to Blocks Live TV's new On The Block panel discussion. Now joining us to discuss today's biggest stories, we have Jason Fernandez and Sofia Cuccinello. Hi guys, great to have you. How are you doing today? Hi Leah, great, thank you. I'm good, thank you. And Sofia, lovely to have you. Yeah, fine, thanks. It's a, it's a pleasure to be uh, to your ear uh, today. Of course. Now, cryptocurrency regulations across the EU and beyond seem to be moving um, more quickly. So does this indicate a greater concern over virtual assets and how they can impact local economies? So, Jason, we'll go straight to you first. What are your thoughts, please? So I think, it, I mean, it's obviously true that uh, regulation in the EU are picking up. Uh, Malta and Estonia led the way here. Uh, France has come up with some great proposals. Um, essentially, France's plan allows you to uh, include the ability to verify who is behind a new coin issuance or trading platform, essentially check the company's business plans uh, and anti-money uh, laundering rules. And obviously, there's a push uh, for the European Union to adopt uh, uh, a regulatory framework of cryptocurrencies that's, that's similar to the one that France and Malta uh, and all these other countries within Europe have, have uh, implemented because uh, it helps if, if all the regulations are in sync. Uh, and I, I, I know that Finland is looking at uh, regulations next. Uh, the EU, the European Commission, meanwhile, has said essentially has, has launched a feasibility study on how to regulate cryptocurrencies, but we're, they're not expected to have uh, any sort of legislation until uh, at least late 2019. Um, so, the, but the question is, what happens when one of these so-called regulated companies that have been effectively endorsed by uh, uh, a country uh, ends up failing? What happens then, and who's responsible? That's a question that's yet to be sort of determined. Okay, thank you. And Sophia, what are your thoughts here? Do you tend to um, agree, disagree with Jason? What are your thoughts? Okay, to be honest, for me, it's a very interesting question because I am a lawyer, and the regulation is very important for us. But we are assisting a revolution in technology, in technological issue. It's like uh, there was a financial industry, and now there is a, a change. It's a big change. It's a, uh, for someone in the past, the cryptocurrency and the blockchain, it was just a fashion trend. But the true story is another one. A cryptocurrency and the blockchain is the future, and it's very important that uh, we find that for the country there is a, a common regulation. And uh, we have a, a big example in uh, Malta, and uh, but um, it's not just uh, it's not just Malta because you know uh, we need a, a common regulation. Um, you are, you are talking about uh, uh, econ uh, uh, local economics, and uh, we have a case in uh, India. It's a new economy, but China and Russia, and. Um, at this moment, it's a big opportunity for, uh, it's a really big opportunity for uh, this country. And why? Because for Iran, you know, it's, uh, there is a sanction from the USA. So a uh, cryptocurrency is a solution. So it's, uh, uh, it's a solution, but at, at the same time, we have a problem because there is a sanction, one side, the other side, there is a regulation. So I think uh, I am I am agree that uh, we need a regulation that it's very important that um, we are uh, we are talking about this because uh, this one is a future. But I think it's very important to find a, a common regulation in the in the world. You know, Iran is uh, is not the first country that use cryptocurrency in order to avoid uh, sanction. Uh, we have uh, Venezuela. But Venezuela is another, uh, is a, it's a similar, but it's not the same. Because in Venezuela, it was a combination between uh, petrol uh, and asset, so it's petrol, and uh, cryptocurrency. And uh, in Iran, maybe in the future, it's uh, a way for uh, payments. So, you know, uh, for us, it's very important to find a, a good regulation about this. It's very important for uh, local impact. Sophia, you have actually just touched on my next question, but let's just get some more detail on it. Um, it would appear that Switzerland believes that doing business um, with Iran through cryptocurrencies is not a breach of US sanctions, which are illegal by international law, according to the United Nations itself. So is, a, is crypto a way to circumvent economic sanctions? And could this tactic be used by other countries? I know, obviously, you did mention Venezuela there and, of course, Russia. So, Sophia, we'll go straight to you since you've just um, touched on it there. So, um, okay, um, you know that 
it's a it's a big it's a big discussion about this because uh, you can think okay there is a sanction from USA this one it's a, a, a way in order to avoid but I think uh, when there is a regulation it's not a way to avoid because you know at this moment uh, um, in uh, you can uh, there are uh, exception and then for uh, for in, uh, for sanctions it's like uh, sale of uh, uh, there are uh, it's like a pharmaceutical and uh, and food products so it's exception and uh, in, cryptocurrency is, ju is just a way it's not if you think that uh, cryptocurrency is uh, a way in order to avoid uh, we are not talking about nothing because uh, I think it's a future. So it's uh, uh, we need to just find a good regulation, justice, and uh, uh, it's a good point for uh, every country in the world. But justice. Okay, so for you, regulation really is the most important thing. And Jason, your thoughts for us, please. So yeah, I mean it's true. Iran is certainly looking at uh, cryptocurrencies as a way to bypass U.S. sanctions. Uh, I see that the president of the Swiss Iranian uh, Chamber of Commerce says uh, that the first transactions are uh, could happen as as soon as three or four months. And as you mentioned, Russia is also considering uh, using cryptocurrencies to bypass U.S. sanctions. Um, it's not something that I that I think is really good uh, for the for the uh, industry at large. I don't think it's a good idea for the crypto industry to be seen as a means to avoid uh, sanctions and I don't think it does anything any good for uh, the already sort of tainted reputation that cryptocurrencies have in relation to whether they are uh, you know a means for illegal activity or anything like that and it's, I think it's a really uh, gray area because it comes down to whether uh, if, if the goal of cryptocurrency in general from a principal perspective is uh, democratization uh, then you really have to worry about uh, how uh, a company countries like uh, maybe Russia that are fairly authoritarian uh, use cryptocurrencies to essentially uh, evade, evade sanctions and then on the other end, uh, to some extent, uh, stifle democracy on, on that end. So it's sort of like a, a gray area where on, on what stand, uh, on, on what side you'd come down on this because it comes down to if, if our goal is freedom, uh, uh, cryptocurrency as a means to promote democracy, then it's sort of a, 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 a much more complicated and nuanced issue. Very interesting points, excuse me, that you make there, because at the moment, something that you know people are definitely trying to do is sort of bring back that, bring about that positive reputation of crypto. So interesting, you know, to hear that actually using crypto to avoid sanctions is actually quite counterproductive to that. Now, another one of our biggest stories so that we have been discussing is the fact that the heads of major crypto businesses met to discuss the future of the industry. So. Do you think that they have the best interest um, of the space at heart, or do you think they have the best interest for the, of themselves at heart? So, Sophia, we'll go straight to you. What are your thoughts? Okay, sure, there is an interest, you know, because it's like, uh, um, if you, okay, if you want to uh, do a difference between Russia, Iran, there is a big difference. It's uh, it's just an economic uh, issue, the, uh, the common interest. But, uh, you know, because Iran, it's a problem at this moment. It, um, it's uh, out of the international market. For Russia, it's different. There has, it's a problem with USA, but uh, for Russia at this moment, there is a new opportunity because, you know, in, uh, in the next week, I think in uh, 10 May, there is a meeting between in Japan and Russia, and uh, this one is very interesting because there is a peace treaty, a treaty, and is missing at this moment. And uh, in, in, uh, in this text, it is possible to find a sharing about uh, technical information in cryptocurrency. So it's another way. It's another case. Uh, it's like uh, um, I think uh, um, the common is find a solution about cryptocurrency. But it's very important that check Russia and check Iran because uh, it's a similar case, but it, it, but it's different. So at this moment we haven't a good. There isn't a regulation, but there isn't a uniform regulation. And uh, without a, regu a uniform regulation, you can understand it uh, uh, <laughs> could be dangerous for the financial market in the world. Okay, thank you, Sophia. And Jason, do you think that um, the heads of these um, big crypto organizations, when they're meeting, do you think that they have the interest of themselves or the space first? What are your thoughts? I think uh, these sorts of meetups will always benefit those organizing them and not the broader community. Uh, the people that met uh, in this particular with for this particular meeting were Coinbase, Binance, 
uh, Goldman Sachs uh, and Galaxy Digital, and those are mostly exchanges. Uh, Galaxy Digital is involved in crypto-based financial instruments. Uh, so in this case, the result of the meeting was to create an orderly market for crypto derivatives, uh, which is important basically for every new uh, asset class. And essentially, this focused on uh, over-the-counter or essentially OTC contracts. Uh, and these are different from Bitcoin futures because uh, futures contracts are managed by regulated companies like, uh, sorry, like CME, for example. Uh, but OTC contracts and options are not standardized, and so they expose traders to credit risk. Uh, and so this is sort of what uh, 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 an area that they were looking to look into. Uh, but I think overall, uh, it, it's a really small sector of the crypto industry at large. These are mostly exchanges. Uh, but in this case, certainly they were looking out for the uh, interests of the traders. But this is sort of uh, a dangerous person, I think. Very interesting Hi. because... You know, as you sort of just touched on there, isn't a small group of some of the most powerful people in um, the crypto space coming together, um, if any, actually centralized events. So how then does this promote decentralized technology when a small group is um, dictating the movement of a whole market? So, Jason, we'll go straight to you there. So I don't think it's possible for a small group to really dictate the market of the, uh, sorry, dictate the movement of the entire market. Uh, and some cooperation is necessary. So we know that regulators are cooperating uh, and coming up with uh, regulation that, that works across uh, borders. Uh, somebody obviously needs to represent the industry view. Uh, I'm just saying that I think uh, the initiatives like this should be open to all stakeholders, uh, not just a select few. I mean, I, I didn't get my invite. I don't know if you were over there. Okay, I also didn't get my invite. Sophia, did you get your invite? No, I am about this, I am totally agree with Jason. And it's important. It's necessary. Operation. So it's like uh, I'm totally agree with you. Okay, excellent. Now, do you think that cryptocurrencies will eventually behave like traditional financial markets with primary control by insiders? Sophia, what are your thoughts? Okay, this one is uh, it, cryptocurrency is an asset very different from uh, from normal currency. You know. But uh, it's normal that uh, when there is a new technology, like in this case, uh, you, you think, OK, maybe it's, uh, it's the same for the future, uh, or there is a, uh, it's different for uh, the, the people uh, in, in the market. But uh, to be honest, uh, you know, for cryptocurrency, there is, a, uh, there is a protocol, there is a rules, and there is a, uh, it's another system. It's a very different. And um, I, I don't think. Uh, Maybe with a regulation, it is possible that there is a control, but uh, it's not control like a, a standard financial market. I think so because it's very, it's very different asset, and uh, for this, uh, the authorities uh, are looking at together for find a solution. Because uh, you can decide, okay, I want to uh, avoid the problem, or I want to find a solution, I want a, re a new regulation. But uh, when you have a new technology, strong, a revolution like a cryptocurrency, it's very important that you uh, study a good solution and that you can understand that it's a different, uh, different way. But uh, at the same time, I think it's very important that uh, now we have a, uh, in Europe a good regulation about uh, payment services. So I think it's a start point for a regulation. But uh, we need a, a different regulation because it's a technology. And when there is not just a, a law, there is technology, there is a law, smart contract, blockchain. And it's very important that you check uh, uh, about country because every country is different. So I don't think there is a, it's a, I don't think the, there will be a, a control. But sure, it's a, it's a possibility, yeah. Okay, so you don't actually think there will be but a slight possibility there. So, Jason, your thoughts? Do you tend to um, agree with Sophia here, disagree? So I think it's something that needs to be guarded against, uh, that we have basically primary control by insiders. Uh, but it's, it's a sort of, uh, it's, a, it's a really subtle question because on one level we have this great technology that was designed to be permissionless uh, and free us from regulation. And the very first thing the industry does is try to go make deals with regulators. So there's that sort of fundamental disconnect between what cryptocurrency is supposed to be and what it needs to be in order to function in the real world and to actually, you know, uh, be used to transact. So that's sort of a fundamental uh, uh, contradiction that will have to be resolved. 
but hopefully not through uh, a situation where the market is controlled by a few insiders and the vast majority of people are just sort of locked out. Okay, thank you for your thoughts there. Now, Sophia, we have spoken a lot about regulation today. So are regulations more about protection or actually more about encouraging the right kind of growth? What are your thoughts? Uh, it's not just uh, yeah. You talk, we we talk about uh, a lot about regulation. It's not just a question about regulation. It's like a you need to check country, you need to check uh, other factors. It's market country, and uh, I think the it's very important uh, to protect investors and people because. Uh, um, we are talking a lot um, now, but uh, every day it's uh, uh, it, it's uh, my business. No, it's my work. Um, we we talk a lot about uh, a cryptocurrency, blockchain, but the uh, it's not easy for everyone to understand this uh, this field. It's it's very it's very strong. So uh, I think it's like uh, there are many factors that you need to check, and uh, it's not just one. And uh, it's like uh, you need to check economic uh, issue and you need to check regulation and uh, we are talking today but i am sure that uh, tomorrow there is another problem that uh, we need uh, uh, we need a solution for uh, for technology because there is acceleration so fast so uh, i told you um, there are a lot of factors and uh, we need to check Okay, okay. And Jason, what are your thoughts? Do you tend to think that regulation is more about encouraging the right kind of growth or more about protectionism? So I think we have to look at the motivations here. Uh, government is basically motivated a uh, force in preserving itself and its own power. Uh, and the chief uh, instrument here is to, it, that they're able to you know, maintain their power is the ability to control the money supply. Uh, so call me a cynic, but I think for the most part, government has been looking out for their own interests and essentially uh, uh, maintaining their control over the financial system, both in their country, in their particular country, and in the financial system at large. Uh, and I think the interests of crypto investors are coming in at a distant second. Okay. Now, Jason, you are calling from India, so we'll go straight to you. So does it make any sense for India and China to consider banning cryptocurrencies? Or is this a strategy to firstly prohibit it and then actually bring all crypto, um, excuse me, all crypto activities into law under new regulations? So no, I don't think it's a, it makes sense to ban uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, and speaking about India uh, specifically, I don't think that this is a temporary ban while new regulations are being in, uh, are coming to play. Uh, these are the new regulations that are coming in. Uh, so I think the I think the intention really is to ban crypto uh, if that is exactly what they're what they're considering. I don't think that this is a stopgap measure. So uh, first, I think as an asset cl class, I don't think the cryptocurrencies are inherently uh, any different, any or much more inclined to fraud uh, to fraud than, let's say, stocks or publicly traded companies. Uh, people say that you know 90% of companies uh, are going, cryptocurrency companies are going to fail, etc. But that's comparable to other asset classes. So a large percentage of small cap companies, for example, fail, uh, and even larger percentage of smaller businesses fail on a regular basis. Uh, we all know the story about Kickstarter and how many Kickstarter backers uh, have crowdfunded projects only to be disappointed and not receive their product or had you know, to wait four or five years before uh, actually getting it. So it's kind of odd to single out crypto for regulation specifically. Um, also, on a, second, on a secondary point, lumping all cryptocurrencies together really makes no sense. So there are a wide variety of use cases for crypto. Some, some, are, some, some crypto is basically stable coins, which work a certain way and are reasonably safe. Uh, and that's obviously with the exception of Tether. Uh, others are utility tokens. And of course, uh, still others are of questionable utility. Uh, so to paint them with a broad brush is just wrong. Okay, and Sophia, what are your thoughts here? What would you like to add? Okay, I agree with Jason, but there is a consideration that I want to do. Uh, there is a difference for China and the India between the cryptocurrency and the blockchain. Because for, chi for China and uh, India is very important blockchain. The problem is cryptocurrency. And the cryptocurrency is a problem because uh, uh, for in at this moment, India and China are talking ab about uh, a new digital currency. So um, there is a, when, when you talk about China and India, 
we need to, de to do a, a consideration. Okay, uh, China would like to do a good blockchain, but don't want a, doesn't want a, um, a, a Bitcoin. So I think it's an economic problem for government. So it's not just a question about cryptocurrency. Because if you, if you think, okay, uh, I want blockchain, but I don't want uh, cryptocurrency, it's not true. I want blockchain, but I want my digital currency. It's a big difference. Very, very interesting there. And just finally, continuing with India, um, in late February, actually, um, the Supreme Court of India gave the country's authorities four weeks to come up with crypto regulations. It has apparently actually granted an extension on that decision until July. So is this an election year decision or is India really against legalizing cryptocurrencies? And if so, why? So, Jason, we'll go straight to you. Okay, so just to uh, recap that the, the the last question for a second, uh, there's a there's this common trope that uh, block blockchain is good and cryptocurrencies are bad, uh, but true blockchain uh, is a distributed system and a distributed system requires uh, a non centralized group of people to essentially check transactions and to verify transactions, and really the only way to get a group of people that are not uh, that are non centralized to do that is to incentivize them somehow, uh, and that's basically where cryptocurrency comes in. So really. Uh, true blockchain is sort of uh, inseparable from cryptocurrency. They're really two sides of the same coin. Uh, so there's really no way to separate it unless you start talking about uh, private blockchains and you talk about really managed centralized blockchains, which really, you know, is is you know is a gray area, I guess. Um, going back to India specifically, uh, I think India is really against legalizing crypto, and I think the reason comes uh, from a fear that they will lose control. Uh, India tends to act really reflexively to new technology, and in most cases, there's a knee-jerk reaction to ban things. Uh, so India recently banned a game, a really popular game called PUBG. Uh, India has also banned drones, while meanwhile, innovators in other countries are actually able to uh, conduct research and basically create autonomous drones, an entire industry. Uh, that's been locked out uh, for Indian entrepreneurs. So I think the, the effect of this is it really ties the hand of local entrepreneurs and technologists, and they're effectively forbidden by law to work on you know new and promising technology. Uh, so a lot of the crypto community has come together in India uh, and has done an admirable job of fighting back. Uh, the efforts are mostly led by Akshay and Manav of Blockchain India. Uh, they've organized essentially well-attended town halls in every major city in India. Um, I helped organize the one uh, that was in my city in Goa. Uh, also, there's uh, Nishal Shetty of Wazirx, who's, which is a local cryptocurrency exchange, and he's been tweeting the RBI governor at least once a day uh, for the past several months now. So there's a, a whole group of people within India that uh, there's the India needs India needs crypto, India wants crypto hashtag uh, that these you know the crypto industry in India is sort of fighting back or at least saying uh, voicing our opinion. Absolutely. Gosh, very, very powerful from the crypto community in India there. And Sophia, what are your thoughts finally for us, please? I think it's a good decision uh, because uh, it's an uh, election year. So, and uh, you know, in, uh, in India at this moment, there are two positions about the cryptocurrency and the blockchain. In, uh, uh, Indian government uh, would like uh, a digital currency, as I told you before. But uh, there is a problem with uh, 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 other cryptocurrency. And in the government, there is uh, two positions. One, OK, I would like cryptocurrency. Other one, I don't want. So when there is a, a big decision, because you know cryptocurrency is not just India, it's in the world, it's, uh, it's a good decision that take time about this. And uh, I am agree with this. And I think it's... Uh, it's economical. Uh, it's economical issue, but uh, it's good. It's a good decision. Yeah. Sophia, Jason, thank you both so much. It's been an absolute pleasure having both of your opinions on the line with us today. It's been brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Leo. Thank you. Honestly. You too. Now, that is all from us here at Blockside TV's new On The Block panel discussion. You can get in touch with us on social media. It's at Blockside TV, and you can give us your thoughts on today's biggest stories. But for now, we'll see you tomorrow.